This is a key to topic 26, part C, worksheet one. And part one says this, each of the following has an oblique asymptote. And you want to find the oblique asymptote using either long division or synthetic division. Make sure you show the work. And then you use your own paper. So you have three functions there. And then number two, part two, it says, determine the following rational function has an oblique asymptote. Indicate yes or no. No work is necessary. Just write yes or no in your own paper. Okay, so let's let's just kind of remind ourselves something about oblique asymptotes. So oblique, the word oblique and slant asymptotes mean the same thing. And oblique and slant asymptotes are actually linear asymptotes. So so when you draw oblique asymptotes or slant asymptotes, they're going to be they're going to be lines. Now a function will have an oblique asymptote if the degree of the numerator is exactly one more, exactly one more, just one more than the degree of the denominator. And if that's the case, then to find it, you're going to use long division or synthetic division, and the quotient is the slant asymptote. Okay? So let's look at number one. So here's number one. So in number one, you have y equals x cubed minus 125 divided by x squared minus 8x plus 15. All right, now remember, you're told it has an oblique asymptote. And you can see that is true because look, the degree of the numerator is 3, the degree of the denominator is 2. 3 is 1 more than 2. So that's why it has, that's why it has an um, oblique asymptote. But you got to find it. So to find it, you have to use, in this case, you have to use long division because you cannot use synthetic division here. This is not linear. All right, so so uh, you have to use long division. So let's go ahead and use long division. Let's use long division. So we have x squared minus 8x plus 15 divided into, and then remember you are missing some terms here. So you have x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 125. Okay, so x squared into x cubed is x x times x squared is x cubed, x times a negative 8x is a negative 8x squared, x times 15 is 15x, and now you're going to subtract. And when I subtract, I get x cubed minus x cubed is 0, 0x zero squared minus a negative uh, 8x squared is, is, remember this is going to be positive 8x squared, right? So if you, got, if you have to rewrite this, the opposite of a negative x, 8x squared is a positive 8x squared. So 0x squared and 8x squared is 8x squared. 0x squared subtract 15x squared is a negative 15x. I'm sorry. 0x squared subtract 15x is a negative 15x. And now let's bring in the next term. Then we, then we do the division all over again because you stop when the degree here is less than the degree here. You now they're the same. You continue on x squared into 8x squared is positive 8. 8 times x squared is 8x squared. 8 times negative 8x is a negative 64x. 8 times 15, use your calculator if you have to, 8, 8 times 15 will give you um, a positive 120. And now you're going to subtract. 8x squared minus 8x squared, 0. A negative 15x subtract a negative 64x, so that means uh, negative 15x plus 64x. The opposite of a negative 64 is a positive 64. So um, 64 minus 15, that gives you 49x. And then negative 125 subtract 120, that is uh, uh, negative 245. Um, okay, so notice knows the degree here is 1, the degree here is 2. So since the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor, you're done. So this is your slant asymptote. The quotient is your slant asymptote. So you're going to say the answer. The answer, you're going to say y equal x plus 8. Because remember, the slant asymptote is a line, so you got to name it using a line. So you're going to say y equal, y equal x plus 8. All right, so that was number 1. Okay, let's look at number two. In number two, we have this problem for number two. All right, number two, we have x um, f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 2 
divided by x minus 9. And so notice the degree of the numerator is 2, the degree of the denominator is 1. Since 2 is 1 more than 1, you're going to have a slant asymptote. So when you draw that oblique asymptote, it's going to be a line. We've got to find that oblique asymptote. So one way to do it is to use long division, or you can use synthetic division here. You can use synthetic division here because the, the, um, uh, the divisor is a linear factor and the coefficient's one. So we're going to do it both ways just to remind you how to do this. First of all, let's, let's use long division. So you can say x minus 9 divided into x squared plus 2x minus 2. So x into x squared is x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 9 is a negative 9x. And now you're going to subtract. When I subtract x squared minus x squared 0, 2x subtract a negative 9x means the same thing as 2x plus 9x. So that becomes 11x. Bring on the negative 2. Continue division. x into 11x is positive 11. 11 times x is 11x. 11 times a negative 9 is a negative 99. And then we subtract. 11x minus 11x is 0. A negative 2 subtract a negative 99 means negative 2 plus 99 which is 97. The degree of a constant 0, 0 is less than the degree here, which is 1, so we're done. So this is your slant asymptote. So the slant asymptote, or the oblique asymptote, you're going to say this, so you have to say y equal x plus 11. x plus 11. Now let's go ahead and do this using uh, synthetic division. So if I use synthetic division, Remember what you got to do, you got to be careful. You got to set this equal to 0, so you get 9, so you can put 9 like that. And then the coefficients of your um, dividend. There are no missing terms, and it's already in descending order, so 1, 2, negative 2. 1, 2, negative 2. Bring on the 1, 9 times 1 is 9, add, you get 11, right? Multiply, 99. Add, you get 97. So notice this is the remainder that you got here. And this is your depressed polynomial or your quotient. So remember that you see you don't see any variables there, right? So some students have trouble with that. So your, your dividend in the original problem was the, the, the degree was 2. So you're dividing by x, so you're going to go one less. So x squared, you're going to write this as x instead. So x, and there's your constant. And so notice this right here becomes x plus 11, and there's your quotient. All right, and so the slant asymptote then, slant asymptote will be y equals x plus 11. All right, so that's number two. Okay, let's look at number three. In number three, we have this function, g of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2 divided by x squared minus x minus 6. All right, so notice that I have to use long division here because this is not linear, so I have to use long division. So I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 6 divided into x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. Okay, x squared into x cubed is x x times x squared is uh, x cubed. x times a negative x is a negative x squared. x times a negative 6 is a negative 6x. And then you subtract. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. Two, a negative 2x squared subtract a negative x squared. That means the same thing as say negative 2x squared plus x squared. So that's a negative x squared. A negative x subtract a negative 6x means the same thing as negative x plus 6x. So that's a positive 5x, right? Negative x and 6x is positive 5x. And then bring down the 2. Then we do the division all over again. x squared into negative x squared is a negative 1. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Negative 1 times a negative x is a negative, um, uh, is a positive x, excuse me, positive x. And then negative 1 times a negative 6 is a positive 6. And then you subtract. Negative x squared subtract itself is 0. 5x subtract x is 4x. 
2 subtract 6 is a negative 4. And knows the degree here is 1, the degree here is 2, the degree of the uh, remain, uh, remainder is less than the degree of the divisor, so you stop. So there's your slant asymptote. Your quotient is your slant asymptote. Now remember when we had the discussion, before I go on to actually write it out, remember we said that the slant asymptote is a linear asymptote, right? It's linear. So you see this is linear. So your slant asymptote, your slant asymptote or oblique asymptote, but you got to say y equal x minus 1. And remember, that's a linear equation. That's a line. Same thing here. Your slant asymptote must be a line. So your quotient must be linear. So you see, that's, that's an equation of a linear, uh, linear function. Same thing here. Your slant asymptote must be linear. Okay? All right. And then let's look at number four. So in, oh, well, that was number three. So number three, so that was the last one. So that was number three. Okay, let's look at part two now. Part two says this. Part two says, determine if the following rational function has an oblique asymptote. Indicate yes or no. No work is necessary. Just write yes or no. But, I mean, you, you still have to explain, right? So you, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just put yes or no. So remember, a function will have an oblique asymptote. Will have an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote, same thing, if the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator. So let's look at number one. So in number one, in number one, so this is part two, number one, part two, number one. So we have h of x is equal to 2x squared divided by x to the fourth minus 16. So you got to look at the degrees. So the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 4. Since the degree of the numerator, so the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, you have the uh, h of x will have a horizontal asymptote instead. Okay? So there are no oblique asymptotes. No oblique asymptote. Okay? So the answer number one is, is um, uh, uh, no. Okay? So the degree of the, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Number two, uh, q of x is equal to 5x squared minus 16x minus 2 divided by, divided by um, 3x squared minus 7x plus 4. All right, so, so the notice, notice here, the degrees are the same, right? So degrees are the same. So you're going to have a horizontal asymptote again. So since the, since, since the degrees, the degree of numerator equals degree of denominator, okay? So degree of numerator equals degree of the denominator, um, Q of X will have a horizontal asymptote. So there are no oblique asymptotes. All right. So the answer number two is, is um, uh, no. Okay. Number three. Number three. So number three, g of x equals x to the fifth minus 35 divided by 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1. So notice this time, this time the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, right? But you don't get, you don't have any oblique asymptotes because the degree of the numerator is two more than the degree of the denominator. So there are no oblique asymptotes. There are no oblique asymptotes since the degree 
of the numerator is 2 more than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so remember, in order for you to have an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote, it has to be exactly one more. Exactly one more. This is two more. Five is two more than three. All right, so that is, that is the key to topic 26, part C.